Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Tech with Alan Spaja. In this video, I'll show you how to define rate limiters in a Laravel 11 application. Let's get started. So rate limiting in simple terms is a way to limit any action, especially incoming HTTP requests within a defined window time. It is applicable to routes, IPs, and what have you. The implementation of rate limiter is essential to shut out malicious boots, prevent DOS attacks, and ensure shared access across the application users without interruption. So what this means is that there is a possibility that someone will be trying to intrude into your application, probably making 1000 requests in one minute, maybe through maybe writing a for loop and then hitting your application or probably using some um, tools to make requests to a particular route just to attack the application. So this is where this rate limiting comes handy so that you can actually limit the number of um, requests that a particular route can accept within a very within a defined window time. In Laravel 11, there is a rate limiting abstraction which works with the catch configuration, either Redis, Memcache, or database of the application to limit any action within a defined window of time. The rate limiting can be implemented directly via the facet in the boot method of the app service provider or on routes via a middleware. So this is how the rate limiting facet can be um, accessed directly. So you could see here, this is rate limiter. And then this is the definition. If we want to use it in our route, we we'll use this name global. And this is another definition again. If we want to use this in the API, we we'll use API. So this is how to directly access the rate limiter facet. Then you could also um, use the rate limiter middleware on the routes. So there is the one that comes default with Laravel. So it's called Trotto. So this is the default um, rate limiter that comes with Laravel. It says you can only make 60 requests in one minute. So this is what this means. Uh, if you make more than 60 requests to this particular route, it will actually take the user to an error page. The rate limiter uses the default cache configuration of the application, but you can customize the cache driver for the rate limiter by defining a limiter key in the configuration. Probably you can change the cache store. So if you hand over to EMV, you can so this is the catch store. So you can say database or whatever you, what you want to use. If, now, if you want to customize the response, you, you can customize responses for exceeded limits. Say, for example, what Laravel does by default is that it takes the user, it redirects the user to a 429 too many request um, error page. So by then, if you want to take control of what error should be returned to the user, probably you want to render a web page or you want to return a JSON response. When you are interacting with the rate limiter facet, um, so this is the for method and then you have the callback. You can do a chain method of the response here and then you return the response. So then you can also customize the response message in the app.php file. So if you head over to app.php file, for example, so this is where you can customize that here. So it says, so the exception is called trusty request exception. So, and then it gets the return header and then if it is expecting a JSON or you want to return a view. So this is the to errors.429 view that I did to return a custom and page. So these are quite really helpful stuff that you want to do in your application so that, you know, there is this um, page that gets returned on 429. It will just show one page and then the user is not able to return back to a particular home page. So, but then you can um, customize how the 429 page will look like. And then if you want them to go to another page, um, rather than just giving them, okay, you have to try in late, um, 60 seconds or two minutes or so, you can actually tell them to go back to the home page. So this is what the 429.blade.php file um, looks like. So I'm going to create a video on my YouTube channel where I'm going to be talking about errors in Laravel. So this is situated in the errors folder. So but in this app here, this is just a request exception. And then when it, there is an exception of such, it will check if, there's, if it's expecting a JSON and then return a JSON response or probably return a view. So if you come to web.php5, for example, this is a default rate limiter in Laravel called Trotto. So I'm going to change this to three, such that if I go to the browser and make more than three requests to this URL, it's going to, throw, it's going to return the error page. And then in this case now, it will return the 49 page that I just showed. So if you head over to the browser, um, in the web.php file, um, I attached the default um, rate limiter in Laravel, which is called Trotto, to the landing page and then limit the request coming into the landing page to be three per minute. So if it exceeds three, it's going to return the Trotto request exception. 
that is going to show that four to nine page i just showed you so if i head over here and i say enter so this is the first request and then i make the second request and then i made the third request and then you see i've made more than three requests so it will return four to nine error so too many requests it says you can retry after 16 seconds so if i hit it again it will show five seconds and then you see so it's been cast so it says two seconds i can try after two seconds so after two seconds if i try again it will actually return me to the page so this is how um, the rate limiter works so this comes handy just in case somebody is trying to attack an application with multiple requests like probably making 1000 requests into the application you can limit those actions so that the resources can be available to every other user of the application okay i just showed you how the default um, throttle rate limiter works in laravel and then we just said it should limit requests to this particular url to three and then once it exists three it will throw the throttle request exception which actually returns the four to nine page but then if you want to do custom rate limiter so like you could see here you use the four method and then this is the name of the rate limiter for web page and then for pages that will be rendered on the web browser and then this is another rate limiter here. and then using the four method it's called api so this is going to be used for api and then so just like i did for throttle um this is same thing uh, it's going to be achieving it says limit the request to three per minute for a, a user that is logged in or for a particular ip so if i head over here and i still say throttle and i say global so it's going to um, perform the same function so with with that three but then this is just for example you could have more um you could have more stuff you want to do based on a particular user that is locked in say for example a user cannot perform certain actions like um, in less than a minute you know you can't be submitting 1000 posts in a minute so you want to be able to limit such actions so if you want to apply this um global um, rate limiter to a particular group of routes to use the middleware and then you say throttle then colon and then the name of the rate limiter you define so all of the routes within this place will be will accept requests based on the number of requests that was defined in this rate limiter if you say for example you say um, 10 here it will only accept 10 requests per minute and then once it has said 10 requests it will return the 4 to 9 page so same thing for api uh, probably are using laravel to build api so you can still uh, define um, rate limiter for api so what this means is it's saying three accept only three requests within a minute um, so this per minute is the window time and then if the user makes more than three requests to this um, group of routes where this api trot where this api rate limiter is applied to we to return this response basically if you want to apply the api rate limiter registered in the app service um, provider you use throttle colon then api so anytime this v1 slash info is accessed more than three times it will actually um, throw the throttle request exception and then it will throw the response that was defined in the api rate limiter so let's head over to insomnia so that i can make more than three requests and then you see that it will return this response so uh, this is insomnia i'm going to demo um, making more than three requests to the v1 slash info so if i go the first time so it returns api rate limiting demo blah 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 this is 200 um, status so i i send another one it gives me another response so i send the third time it gives me another response so when i send the fourth time you see it returns four to nine too many requests so it says this will be handy for rate limiters on api routes. this is how this works when you are dealing with rate limiting for apis so next let me walk you through the manual interaction with the rate limiter facet and then to keep this video simple i'll just go to run through them and if you want to take a look at the examples i'll leave the link to my article in the description section so we have the attempt method so the attempt method of the laravel rate limiter facet is used to define rate limits it basically returns false when the callback has no remaining attempts available or return a specified response if the limit is not reached the first argument accepted by the attempt method is a rate limiter key which may be any string of your choosing that represent the action being rate limited followed by the number of requests per minute and the callback function so you can pass an optional fourth argument um, an optional fourth argument can be defined to determine how many attempts can happen within a window time in seconds 
so uh, let me just show you that now so for example you have routes so I, I'm just going to do these examples here so that you could see how they work so this is the attempt method and then this is the rate limiter key called user status and then the number of requests which is three and then um, you could have yeah you could have a, a callback function here and then you can have an optional fourth parameter um, that is called the decay seconds in seconds so you how long should it take before you begin to try um, to retry it again so you could say decay rate and then you specify maybe you want to so you want to uh, probably this is 120 means in two minutes so in two minutes time it will start afresh again so this is what the decay rate means so this is optional but then what this means is that for this particular rate limiter key it's going to allow just maximum of three um, requests per minute so I could actually store this, um, I could just store this in a particular and say probably executed and then so I'll just say if it ever needs to be false and then I'll just return too many, many requests for example as a response. I could call the hit method to increase this um, rate limiter key. If it is attempted more than three times in in the space of 60 seconds it will return too many requests so the next we have too many attempts yeah so for too many attempts so you have the rate limiter key and then you have the number of requests per minute by default so if this rate limiter key is attempted more than five times it's going to return this error but if it is not up to, you can return the message and say it's attempt not reached, for example, it's the attempt not reached. So this is how this works. And then also you have a method called remaining. So with the remaining method, you can actually check how many is remaining. So it's pretty same way. Uh, let me just comment this now and then still show that example. So you could have what we call remaining. On my YouTube channel, I have a video where I explain certain tools you should have as a Laravel developer that can make you to be productive. So if you hover over here, it says remaining. So the key and the attempt. So I could just um, take this off now. So I'm just trying to show you something here. So basically, it just accepts the rate limiter key and then the number of attempts. So if the attempts so it will be counting it to be returning the number of attempts left so every time you um, hit this particular um, rate limiter key it would reduce it will show the number of attempts that is left either one or two or three that is left and then if it is not if it's um, executed um, entirely to show too many requests so next is the increment the increment method the increment method is invoked to increase the value of the rate limiter key which by default increase by more than one the first argument is the key followed by the time window and the number of increase so you could say for example this is the increment method so you could say in two minutes increase it by five or increase it by three or increase it by four so you want to increase the number of chances that is left in a particular uh, window of time this is uh, 120 which indicates two minutes so 60 seconds is a minute 120 seconds is two minutes so i'm just going to comment this so you have another method called the retry so it's called retries left so what retry left does is that um, you can use it to get the number of attempts left for a given key so if i execute this um, block of code now it's going to return so this is the rate limiter key defined here so it's going to return the number of the number of attempts that is left so that's what this retries left does. so you could see it says retries left key and then the max attempt so you pass b for example the max attempt where it's in maybe it's five um, like say three so it will be checking and then it will be returning it okay out of three how many is left if it is two it will return two if it is one it will return one then if it is zero it will remain it will return zero so there is what we call the available in so let me just um, so this is quite helpful when you are building large applications and then you want to control the number of requests that are coming into the application so that 
the resources can be available across the users of the application. So if there are no more attempts left, you can use the available method to get the number of seconds remaining until the number, until more attempts will be available. Say for example, we say um, you can only um, attempt this rate limiter key called game status one. Um, you can make five attempts. So if you make the first, um, if you exhaust the five attempts, so this available in will return the number of seconds left for you to continue making another attempt. So if, for example, we say here is five and the user makes five requests in 60 minutes, then it will show 59 seconds here. And then as the time counts down, what it will be showing the number of seconds that are left. So that is what the available in method does. So you probably you want to use this within a particular method and then return um, response to the user so that they will know how much time they have to try again. Okay, so the last method is the clear method. So you can invoke the clear method of the rate limiter facet to clear or reset the number of a rate limiter key. So you pass the rate limiter key you want to clear. So if I say, for example, um, on this line 41, I say rate limiter clear, it will clear all the number of attempts for this particular rate limiter key called games, game hyphen status colon one. So it will clear all of the attempts that have been made. In this video, we've learned about rate limiter and how to implement it in Laravel. It is an essential skill to building secure Laravel application. So you can use Postman or browser or write test cases to make several requests to confirm the rate restrictions. Rate limiting implementation is useful to help maintain performance, protect against abuse, and ensure fair usage across all users of the API. So let me know what you think about rate limiter in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly click the subscribe button and then you can also share this video with your community. Until next time, bye.